everybody! Welcome to a Cricut Craft Tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a really beautiful glass with some glass etching cream by Armor Etch and a Dollar Tree cup. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time, so hit the bell icon because that will alert you to when I post a new video. Let's get started so I can show you guys how to etch a Dollar Tree cup. It makes a great inexpensive gift or just something fun for you to have in your home. In Design Space, we've already um, measured our space. So I know I have about three inches wide to work with. The height isn't such a big factor for me because it is quite a large space. So I'm going to open up my text and I'm going to type in lab and I'm going to hit enter and hit mom. Um, I have already selected my font. This is Christmas time personal use. But I find a lot of times with this font, it's easier to ungroup your letters versus um, trying to do them with the letter spacing. And there are some fonts like that. So over here, up in your upper right-hand corner, you're going to click Ungroup. And what we need to do is move all of our letters together so that they touch, minus the capital letter. Those shouldn't touch. But you do want them kind of closer together. So we're just going to move all of our letters over one at a time. Oops, and that's not quite close enough. And then I'm going to select the two letters I've moved, and I'm going to move them right next to Mom. I'm going to use an image from Design Space, and I'm just going to search Dog Paw. And I found this one that I liked, so we'll just go ahead and use that one. Now, this one has two pieces to it, which we only want this whiter outline piece. So over here, there's two ways you can do this. You can either just use this little eye and make him disappear, and that's just going to disappear the center. Or you can ungroup him and move the paw that you want to keep away and then just delete this. I prefer to do it that way. It just leaves me with less layers in my layers tab. So what we're going to do is move our lab and our mom around to the way we want them. Now I have to be honest, I don't love the gap here. So what I'm going to do is select the O and the M and I'm actually going to move them up to the top of the word mom. We're going to resize down our dog paw so that it fits about where we want it to. And you can resize them you know, as many times as you need to. And I'm going to select the whole item and I'm going to weld it. The reason I'm going to weld it, A, is because it has cut lines in the A and the B and the O and the M. And also it makes the dog paw the same color. So it's just easier to weld it rather than to attach the A and the B and the O and the M and all that. So we're going to resize it down. That's pretty good size. And then we're going to do the name. So we're going to do Annie. And again, with this font, I just find it easier to ungroup it. Some fonts are like that. They're just a pain if you try to do letter spacing. These ones tend to get too close to that capital letter. So just move each letter over as you want them. And then you're going to move your capital letter if you want. And I like my capital to be kind of close, but not super close. Now with this one, again, you're going to select the whole word. And you're going to weld to get rid of all the cut lines in between the N and I E. I'm going to click make it. Now because we're doing this as a etching and we need it as a stencil, you want to make sure that you're going to move the name over a bit because you want some space where you're going to have a little bit of a border around the lab mom and then the name. Go ahead, click make it. I'm going to cut this on some black 651 vinyl scrap that I have. I'm going to go ahead and weed it and I'll show you guys just how we weeded it because we're going to do it in like a reverse weed. So instead of getting rid of the large background, you're going to actually get rid of the name and the words and the paw print. So let's go over, get it cut. I'm going to show you all of that and then we can uh, get ready to etch. Before we etch, we are going to use some rubbing alcohol. This is just 91% rubbing alcohol. Nothing crazy or exciting about it. Got it from Walmart. It's super cheap for a big tub, but I just put it on in a little kitchen towel that I keep up here for this. And you just clean it off, just like this. Nothing too, you know, crazy about that. But we always want to make sure we're using a clean surface. The next thing that we're going to do, and I already weeded these for you guys, just so you didn't have to watch me weed them. But remember, when you're doing a, um, an etching, you want to do what I call reverse weeding. Other people have other words for it. But what I do is I weed out the words versus the background. So this is on black vinyl. This is obviously the white backing to the vinyl. And you always want to leave a bit of a border around it so that when you put the etching cream on, you're not um, going to get it on the glass. So we're going to cut a little bit of transfer tape. And this is just a medium tack from uh, 651 Vinyl. 
I'm going to try to cut this straight. I didn't cut the last one real straight, and so it's kind of messy. So we'll just cut that fairly straight. Um, it's going to probably not cover the whole thing, but that's okay. Just want to make sure you get that on there, and you can use your squeegee to help you. Let me grab that. Hang on one second here. I forgot to grab that for you guys. So got your little squeegee scraper thingy, whatever you want to call it. And you want to make sure that all the centers of your letters stay in, so like the A and the E on this one stay in and we're just gonna simply peel move that because it's and you're just gonna peel it and sometimes with this like I like to hopefully you guys can see this I'll lay it upside down and peel the backing from the vinyl. I just find that works a little bit better for me. So what I'm gonna do is find where the seams are because this is a Dollar Tree glass as I told you before. So I love using Dollar Tree stuff. I'm gonna use this bowl just to kind of hold it steady while I'm placing my vinyl, and I'm just gonna eyeball where I wanna put it. It doesn't have to be perfect, nobody's gonna notice. So you're just gonna lay your vinyl down. Now because it's a nice big square or rectangle in this instance, it's gonna be pretty easy to lay it down. But you wanna make sure that you don't have any bubbles around your words. So you just can look from the inside, and I don't know how you guys can see that, but if you look from the inside, it's a little bit easier to tell if you have any bubbling around your letters. But we'll go back over this again with the scraper here in just a second. And hopefully my echo doesn't talk because it wants to. Oh, no. I have a, one of those Amazon echoes and it likes to talk randomly. And I try to shut it up when I'm doing videos, but sometimes I forget. So you're just gonna peel off your vinyl or your transfer tape. Do this slowly and you're gonna see some bubbles up in this part. It's okay, don't worry about those bubbles. You only need to worry about the bubbles that are gonna be around your letters. So let me get another piece of transfer tape. Actually, I might be able to trim this one twice. No, I'll just use another piece, it's fine. No big deal. So I'm gonna actually just go over this one really quick while I have it. And I don't typically use my scraper because it can actually give you more bubbles if you're not careful around the edges. So I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna press it and just make sure, and you can use a bright light, like I have an LED light that I have and you can just shine that right on there and it'll give you a little more of um, a reflection to see with and make sure you don't have any bubbles because a lot of people complain when they do etching that they end up with bleeding and that's caused by bubbles. So bubbles are one thing that is just not um, okay when you have an etching. You need to watch for those. But again, it's super easy to check for them and just to kind of double check yourself. And I always use my finger to press it down. I find I just have a little bit better luck. So we're gonna use another strip of medium tack transfer from 651. And we're gonna lay it on top of the Lab Mom part. And you're just gonna do the same thing making sure that you're keeping all your centers of the paw and the words and again i like to flip it over and i like to peel it this direction i find it does tend to help especially when it has a lot of little centers and things this one i probably could peel the other way but i do like to show you guys some of my little tips and tricks that i've learned over these years and then we're going to turn our glass around and again i'm going to use the bowl i just use it to kind of give me a little extra um, help as to like keeping it stable when I'm laying this down and then you're gonna place the lab mom and this doesn't again It's if it's not a hundred percent perfect. Nobody will notice But you do want to make sure because see I got it a little too far up. I think but it's our I think it'll be okay um, You do want to watch for that Lip up here, which I was not I was a little too close to but it's okay We'll press out some of the you can see I don't know how well you guys can see this But there's some wrinkles up here. It's not actually on the L But we're going to need to watch to make sure that they don't somehow migrate into the L and we can Possibly just trim that but we'll make sure to just kind of keep an eye. So again, just gonna peel off my transfer tape And we're going to go over this one really well, especially up by that L, just to make sure that none of those wrinkles end up in that. Um, in case I did not tell you, just because I can't remember if I told you, we are using Christmas Time as our font. It is a personal use only font. I do believe that you can purchase a commercial use on this font. Um, 
but this font is really pretty and I've been using it a lot and I like it because it cuts really nice because it's kind of chunky. So again, we're going to just make sure we're going through because I can see there's a little bit of a bubble right here on the edge of the M. I think I got that one out. So you're just going to go through and just check and make sure you don't have any bubbles next to the edges of your letters. And I'll usually do like one little piece at a time. So like if I'm doing the mom, I only focus on the mom word. I don't focus on the lab. I don't focus on the paw print. Now I'm going to go down and just rubber on the paw print. The paw print looks pretty good. This is the only place I have a little bit of concern is just right here at the top, but I think it'll be okay. So when working with Armor Etch, um, I'm just going to tell you right here, it says, will not etch plastic or some Pyrex, and you want to shake it before using. Make sure that you wear gloves. I just have some cheap, like, um, latex gloves. They're actually, I think they use them for, like, mechanics and stuff. But I haven't used my arm etch in a bit, so I'm going to shake it really quick and get some into the bowl. And I might actually not even use the bowl for this. We may just go straight from the jar. But we're going to just make sure it's really well shaken. And I'm tapping mine because, like I said, it's been a little while since I've used it. So I just want to make sure that it's well mixed. That's one of the big things with the Armor Etch, um, just making sure that it's really well um, mixed up. And just a warning, when you open this, you'll see, and I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this on camera, but you're going to get some chunks, some dried up chunks. Be careful, that stuff will actually like damage a surface. All right, I just wanted to get some of those out before I put the gloves on. So let's get the gloves on. Um, make sure you take off your jewelry. Uh, you'll notice I'm not wearing my wedding ring or my other rings. Take off your jewelry, make sure you're working on a clean surface, and I'm actually going to lay down now that I've gotten this all um, opened and stuff. I'm going to lay down just a piece, this is just some freezer paper, and I'm going to lay it down just to um, kind of protect my surface a little bit, just in case. You don't want to, you know, get it all everywhere. So we're going to open our armor etch again. I'm going to just do it over the bowl, Let's see if I can get it open. And when I open mine, I like to get some of this dried gunk off, and I like to get make sure it goes in a garbage can or in the bowl, because you don't want to get it everywhere. I'm going to use a pretty small brush for this, just because I'm just going to do it right out of the jar. And you want to use a pretty thick layer. Um, do not rub it on, dab it on. And you're going to dab a nice, thick, heavy layer on, because you don't want to um, miss a spot. So you want to make sure you got lots and lots of armor etch on this. Now people will say that they take, before they wash it, that they'll take it and scrape it back into the jar. I personally have not tried that yet, um, but I may try it and see what happens. Armor etch can be pretty pricey, so keep that in mind. Do use a coupon if you get it at a craft store because this stuff does not go on sale. But 99% of the time, you can use a coupon. So always use a coupon. I'm For those that don't know, I am a coupon queen. I love coupons. <laughs> I'm a coupon crazy couponer. Um, they're the best. So I have all the coupons from all the craft stores and the grocery stores and all that stuff. So I make sure that I save money when I can. Um, I also don't buy my vinyl from vinyl stores or from craft stores I buy them online and I always buy from 651 because I find they have some of the best prices and the best customer service so if you guys are looking for a new vinyl supplier highly recommend them by the way not sponsored just really like them I think they're great but we're just gonna get all this armor etch on now the jar of armor etch says leave it on for five minutes I tend to like to leave mine on a lot longer I'll usually do about 15 minutes um, I just find it gives a better coverage, like a better etch. So I do tend to leave mine on way longer than it says. Um, if you're doing Pyrex, like, like the jar says, it may not work on all of them, but it does work on the pie pan that I have, or the pie dish. I guess it's more of a glass dish than anything. It does work on that. Um, I do have to leave it on quite a bit longer, though. So I usually leave that one on 20 minutes. But again, you're going to make sure that you're not getting this off of the black vinyl. And before you go to the other side, we're going to have to set it down and do the other side on the table. And you could actually do them um, at two different times. I just feel like I just want to get it done and be done with it. So before you go to the other side, I just like to look 
and make sure every piece looks like it's well covered, it does. So I'll go to the other side, and this one we're just gonna either, we'll hold it like this, because you just wanna make sure that your other side isn't getting messed up by your hand. So just make sure you're just watching what you're doing. Like I said, nice, thick, heavy coat of this stuff. Please be careful with this stuff. It is not, it is not safe. Don't let your children stick their fingers in it. This stuff is nothing to play with. If you have your cell phones, please make sure they are nowhere near this stuff. Um, it can actually damage that tempered glass. Um, if you get a little dot on it, it will etch it. So be careful. Um, this stuff is not a joke. It is a chemical, so like I always say, be careful. When you rinse it off, wear your gloves as well. I usually will just take my gloves, as long as I don't have any armor etch on them, which I typically don't, I will just take my gloves and save them off to the side and just use the same pair. Not that gloves are expensive, but I like, again, I like a good saving money. So again, knock the lid off. I'm just gonna check and make sure everything looks covered and it's not, I can see a spot I missed. So we're just gonna get a big glob of Armor Etch on that chunk that I missed. And we're just gonna, again, double check it. I think I got everything. So we're gonna set our timer for 15 minutes and when we come back, we can wash it off. I'm just gonna triple check this side. I just like to make sure I've got everything. I hate when you miss a spot because it's so beautiful when it's done, but if you've missed a spot or, ugh, it's just, it's heartbreaking when it doesn't quite come out all the way. So I just like to just make sure that everything has a nice heavy layer. <laughs> I'm really crazy about these things. I'll just, I've done them several times and I have missed spots and been very sad when I went to wash it off and there was a total huge spot missing from where you etch. So you just kind of want to make sure before you put it down to rest that you have covered everything. Okay, I think we are ready to let this sit. So we'll let that sit and etch, like I said, about 15 minutes and we'll come back and we can wash it off. I've got my gloves on, I'm just in my kitchen sink and I'm just going to make sure that um, I'm using a pretty warm water, nothing like hot, but I would say like medium, nothing too steamy, but you do wanna use a warm water. Keep your vinyl on and you're gonna rinse it and make sure you are wearing your gloves because you're gonna have to touch this. So you're just gonna rub your hand over it a little bit to help it rinse right off. And you're just gonna um, just kind of rub it off. You wanna make sure you get all of it off. Okay. This part's really honestly the easiest part is just getting all of the extra armor etch off. And when you feel it, you'll feel it's kind of gritty, and that's a good thing. You want it to feel a little bit gritty. So we're just gonna go ahead and just get all of this off. Okay, so we're just gonna make sure that we've got a nice, clean cup that nothing's left on it. Just gonna make sure we rinse the inside just in case any got in there. And before you give this as a gift or use it, please make sure you do wash it. I will wash it after I take off the vinyl, but um, you do wanna make sure you wash it with a mild soap um, and hot water. Don't scrub it like with a like a super scrubby, you know, um, like Brillo pad or anything like that because you don't wanna scratch it. But you'll wanna make sure that you do scrub it off. So we're gonna get this dry. We'll go and get the vinyl off and we'll um, be able to show you guys the design. Um, I will say that this is probably one of my favorite things to do um, with the Cricut is use the uh, armor etch to etch glass. I think it looks so professional, so pretty. You can make so many really great things that people just don't get to, you know, find in a store. Now I will tell you, so if you look right now, and I don't know how well you guys can see it, but you can see where it's wet and it doesn't look like it etched very well. Don't worry, it's just because it's wet. So once we get everything dried and peeled, it will look much better. So let's go back and get our weeding tool and then we can get ready to peel. We're ready to peel off our vinyl. Um, I will say, if you're gonna use a weeding tool, be careful because you don't wanna scratch the glass. This glass doesn't seem to scratch too bad, so I wouldn't be super concerned, but you just wanna be careful. 
when you're doing it. I'll probably use it for some of these little inside pieces if I can't get them with my nail. Like you can see it kind of rips, but that's okay. No big deal. We'll try to go with our nail. And you don't have to worry about, you know, scraping it with your hand or anything. So that's good. Um, I will say there is a little spot I missed. Uh, I'm not super upset about it. It looks fine. This is a gift for a friend, so I don't think they'll be too picky about the fact that there's just a little piece that for some reason did not etch, but I think otherwise it's looking pretty gosh darn good. So yeah, you're just going to peel off that, and I don't know how you guys can see this. I will put something in here so you can see it better. Let's do the other side really quick. This one's obviously the much larger piece, and you can go back in with this um, after you have done, because um, I did, you know, there's water under this because of the bubbles that are in the vinyl at the top, so I'm going to go back through and I'll wipe this down um, with some rubbing alcohol, also to make sure there's no sticky, like, residue left over from the vinyl, because this is the 651 permanent vinyl, so it is a little bit more, um, got a lot more adhesive to it, and sometimes I find that I end up with a little bit of a sticky residue from it if I'm not careful. But this one's not too bad, so we'll just go through and we'll wipe it down with some alcohol, and then we can put something in here so you guys can see it better. But it needs dried off a little bit too, because it did get a little damp from being um, from those little bubbles at the top. Now this one's got a lot, a lot more pieces, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick these up off of the camera since you saw me do the other side, and I'm gonna dry it and wipe it down, and then I'll put something in here so you guys can see the etching really well. Here's our finished product. I just put some blue paper in here just so you guys could see those etching just a little bit better. But there's the lab mom side. And then here is the name. Now if you look real close, right there is a little spot that didn't etch. It's very possible that I had missed it with some etching cream. Too late now, but luckily I don't think she will notice or Hair. So it's fine. We are always our worst critic. This is not something though that I would sell if with that little notch out of it. So just keep that in mind. I think this came out great. It's going to be a great gift. And actually the beauty of it is it comes with a lid and a straw. So you can put that on and then you have this really nice glass mug. And it can be used for all sorts of things. You don't have to necessarily drink out of it. They could use it for, um, you know, a display piece or whatever they want and put dog treats in it. Um, you know, because you can use a regular mason jar lid on these two, so you can always change the lid out. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer this for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking on the big red box. Hit the bell icon because that will alert you to when I post new videos. I hope you guys had a really great time learning how to etch a Dollar Tree mason jar glass. Happy crafting!